G'day Internet, welcome back to another video. This here is a digital VT220 terminal. Um, but generally speaking, you would consider this simply a serial terminal. Uh, back in the day, you would have expected to see this probably at a library, maybe a hospital, some kind of big organization, because generally speaking, they would have been connected back to some kind of mainframe or mini computer, a VAX system, something along those lines. But even for a vintage computer enthusiast such as myself, the use of something like this is, well, actually pretty minimal. Um, they are exactly what it says on the box, a serial terminal. Uh, you have a monitor, you have a keyboard, you have a little bit of software in order to manipulate communication settings, and that's about your lot. So in today's day and age, unlike other vintage computers, you know, where you can play games or maybe BBS and stuff like that, as it stands, there isn't that much you can do about it. But one thing we can do with this machine is this. Ever since the beginning of time, Unix and Linux based operating systems still have the ability to connect to the command line or the console via serial. Uh, under Linux, you use uh, a service called Getty uh, and it enables you to literally plug one of these in to the serial port on your Linux machine and get a command line. And that's exactly what we're going to do today. So to achieve this, what are you going to need? Well, you're going to need a Linux computer. In this particular case, uh, I'm going to use a Raspberry Pi. Uh, this is actually a Raspberry Pi 4, which is massive overkill for what we're going to try and do. Um, you could literally do this with a Pi 0 or a Pi 1 or a 2 or something like that you don't need a Raspberry Pi 4. Um, this is just in a fancy case, but a Raspberry Pi. You are then going to need, if you're using a regular computer uh, that has a serial port uh, on it, uh, you're good to go. Um, obviously a Raspberry Pi doesn't, so I'm using a USB to uh, serial adapter. Uh, you are then going to need a null modem cable. Uh, which is this guy here. Think of it as a serial crossover cable. Um, but that's a null modem cable there. Uh, and because most of these uh, back in the day serial terminals used a 25 pin serial connector, you are also going to need an adapter. So with all that together, the first thing we're going to do is configure the Raspberry Pi to uh, produce a terminal across the serial port. So here we have our Raspberry Pi all plugged in. Uh, I'm not going to go through how to set up the operating system initially and connecting to the internet. There's plenty of other tutorials online for that. Um, but essentially, here it is. Um, the only thing to note is that I downloaded and used Raspberry Pi OS Lite, um, which uh, gets rid of all the X and the GUI and all the rest of it and simply boots straight to the console. Um, I've also screwed around with this to put the console into what I consider postage stamp resolution and that's primarily so you can see it. The first thing we're going to want to do though once we're logged in is plug in our uh, serial port uh, into the USB. Right. With that in, uh, Raspbian has a great little device called, uh, program called USB Devices. And if we go in, we should see, uh, it went too far. We should see here, hub host controller, uh, serial controller, prolific technology incorporated, USB serial controller. Uh, and that's this guy here. Right, the first thing we're going to want to do is to basically turn on Getty. So on Raspberry Pi, it's really easy. sudo uh, raspberry config, and we want to go interface options, serial port, would you like the shell? Yes. Uh, serial login shell is enabled, serial interface is enabled, okay. Finish, would you like to reboot now? Yes. Right, after rebooting, we simply want to log back in. 
Now, Getty is currently running, but we need to make some slight changes to the configuration file so it works better with the serial terminal. So we want to go uh, sudo nano and it's lib uh, systemd system slash and it's serial hyphen getty at dot service password. Right, and we want to come down to the line that says exec start and go to the end of that. Currently use, it uses a variable for term and we're going to specify VT100 because we're going to actually be doing this in VT100 mode. Uh, and I found it useful to get rid of the other board uh, rate options. So it's only 9600. So we go control X to save, yes, go. Now we want to go uh, system control and I believe it's daemon restart, reload. Reload, right? Um, oops, that should have been uh, sudo. Right, and then we want to go sudo system control start, and it is serial hyphen getty at tty capital USB zero, and that is now running. So the next step is to actually plug in uh, the serial terminal. Right, this bit isn't really rocket science. Here is the uh, end of our USB. Um, we simply want to plug in the null modem cable. Uh, and at the end of this, uh, plug in uh, the 25 pin adapter. And then this just plugs into the back of the terminal, like that. Right, when you turn on the VT, this is what you're greeted with. You want to hit the setup key uh, on the keyboard, and there's a couple of things that we need to set up in here. Uh, the first thing you want to do is you want to go to COM, and we want to set the transmit to 9600, receive to transmit, X off at 128, 8 bit no parity, 1 bit stop no local echo and, and the rest as you see here. Most of this I didn't actually have to change other than the board rate. Uh, the only other thing that I found useful was, I think it's under general, oh sorry, you want to change this to VT100 mode. So by default it's VT200 7-bit control, keep hitting return until it's uh, VT100 mode and make sure VT100 is set for the ID as well. And somewhere here is uh, oh, it's under display. What am I doing? Uh, you want to set this to auto wrap. Uh, the reason is is this is purely a uh, 80 by 24 column screen um, and there's a bunch of stuff uh, on the normal Linux terminal that um, doesn't play nice with such a small resolution these days. So that's that. Uh, and we go to save at the end here and then exit. And in theory, we get VT220 login, which is the login for the Linux machine. Right, so now that we know that the terminals communicating with the Raspberry Pi. There's only one last thing we want to do on the Raspberry Pi, and that is essentially issue the same command, but except instead of start starting the serial, we want to enable the serial service, um, which means that it will start on boot. So the command is sudo system control enable serial hyphen getty at tty usb zero. That recreates a sim link and does a few bunch of things. And now, um, the serial console will start on boot, which means the Raspberry Pi can basically run headless. Uh, we don't need to do any more interaction on it. So all it will need is a network connection and power, and that's basically it. So I kind of started out this video with saying that something like this is actually pretty pointless. And look, it is, but as a vintage computer enthusiast, it's also kind of cool. So as you can see here, I've got the prompt up. Uh, and I've logged in. So what can you actually do? Well, you can pretty much do anything you can normally do at the Linux 
um, terminal, the command prompt, um, with some exceptions. Now, the terminal will only do really basic text, okay? So it doesn't do color, uh, it doesn't do any of the fancy uh, ASCII characters or anything like that. So there are certain things that won't work. Um, one thing you can do, however, is you could uh, install Rainbow Stream. And I'm now on Twitter. So I can go T, um, uh, where are we? Hello world. I'm tweeting this from a VT220 terminal whilst filming my next video. Go. And it will sit there for a second, but it will eventually tweet it. Um, actually, where's my phone? Uh, Twitter, go away, you, and there it is there. Hello world, I'm tweeting this from a VT220 terminal whilst filming with a typo, uh, my next video. So if you jump on Twitter, you'll find that tweet. Right, as tweets come through, this will eventually scroll up. Um, no one seems to be on Twitter at the moment, um, but yes, the things will start to come up, new tweets, uh, you can check your notifications, you can check your messages, all that kind of stuff. It's all very cool. Oop, there we go, ABC News just tweeted a bunch of stuff. Um, oh, and there's my tweet just there. Uh, Toy Bro just tweeted something about Golden Axe Death Adder from Storm Collectibles. Cool, I'll have to check that out. Right, so if we go Q, see you next time, and we're back to the command prompt. So that's one thing you can do. I did play around with some uh, Discord clients, um, but I couldn't get any of them to work. There are actually uh, some games you can play from the command line. One of them is uh, Moon Buggy, which is exactly what you think it is. And you go along, and this can be ridiculously hard. It's a lot of jumping for the most part. How long am I going to last before I die and fall into a crater? Whoop, yep, and I died. Uh, I think it's control C to get out of that. Cool, so that's Moon Muggy. There's also a bunch of text adventures. Uh, no, what is it, uh, ADV, Advent. Uh, would you like instructions? Yes. So there's a bunch of text adventures that you can play from the command line, which is kind of cool. Uh, I can't remember how to get out of this. Quit. Yes. And there we go. Back to the command prompt. So another obvious thing that you can do uh, on from the command line is BBSing. Now, again, depending on the BBS you're dialing into, or dialing into, um, uh, depends on how they're going to display. A lot of BBS systems will ask you a bunch of questions when you first log in of how, what kind of terminal you have. But as an example, I can go uh, telnet, uh, where are we? Uh, dungeon dot, uh, what is it? Synchro dot net. And we're into uh, made of mine Keith's um, BBS, uh, log in, now being 9600 board it's not the fastest thing in the world. And we're at the main menu of the BBS. Um, uh, uh, group local, I think. Ah, Keith did an OS update recently. 
Um, and uh, let's see, it was. So this is a message I posted yesterday, uh, and Keith just replied. I've uh, one from CB. Uh, so he's got uh, one of the uh, Wi-Fi modems that he uses for this kind of stuff for his Commodore 64. Um, I think we can go quit. And we can log off. So there's a bunch of little things like that. So if you're a sysadmin, for instance, uh, you could install some of these games or maybe on your server without no one knowing uh, and keep yourself entertained and looking like you're actually doing something on one of your servers. And speaking of, and this is probably where this machine will end up, you can SSH uh, into other servers from here. So you could actually set this up as a cool kind of retro SSH admin terminal in your office or something like that. So that is some of the things you can do on this terminal. So there we go. That is how you connect a Raspberry Pi to an old school serial terminal. Uh, and like I said, it's pointless, but kind of cool at the same time. One of the things I'd like to improve on all of this is that by the time you get a Pi and a USB cable and a null modem cable uh, and a 25 pin adapter, it all starts to get a bit messy. Like sure, you could just tuck it away and that'd be fine. But I mentioned that the Pi 4 is just like massive overkill for this kind of stuff. And you could easily do it with like a Pi 1, a Pi 2 or a Pi 0. Now, I have seen online hats for the Pi Zero. Now you've got to remember that you don't have to use USB to get your 9-pin COM port. You can actually pull serial straight out of the GPIO ports. So I've seen these hats that plug straight into a Pi Zero and give you a 9-pin serial port and off you go. Um, what I'd like to do is design one like that, but instead of the 9-pin port, I'd have a 25-pin port. And the other thing I'd do is I'd basically pre-wire it as a null modem port, if that makes sense. Um, the only thing you'd have to do is you'd probably have to put a third US, micro USB port on the hat for power and wire it into, I think it's GPO port two that you can power a Pi from. Um, anyway, uh, mainly because once you plugged it into the back of this, you'd be blocking the HDMI and the USB ports on the actual Pi. Um, but yeah, if you had that and it was all pre-wired and you configured the Pi and then put it all together, you would end up with just a nice little dongle, essentially, with USB in for power that would just plug straight into the back of one of these or any serial terminal. So it's something I might have a play with. Uh, I might talk to a mate of mine, Derek, who's quite good at PCB design. I'm not. I can barely find my way through fritzing, but I might even give it a go myself. Um, if something like that already exists, mind you, please let me down, let me know down in the comments. I had a look around and I couldn't find anything, especially with a 25 pin, because I don't want to use um, the converter because it kind of makes it all stick out and it's a bit ugly. So I'd like the 25 pin on the Pi hat um, initially, so there's none of that extra stuff. So yeah, if something like that does exist, let me know. Uh, if I do come up, or Derek <laughs> comes up with a design uh, to do that, uh, I'll do a quick follow-up video on this. But for now, that will pretty much do it. If you like the video, click like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. Uh, you can now find the, the uh, channel on Patreon, just like these wonderful people just here. Uh, and until then, I will see you in the next one.